good evening, this is Houndog Steve wishing you a very pleasant evening and welcome back to the channel. And this evening I'd like to discuss a little bit more about the implications of AI and um, the fact that we may not be quite as prepared as we think we are for the onslaught of the kind of AI that is taking over some of the decision-making processes, shall we say, some of the algorithms that we're seeing with YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, Google, all across the internet uh, that are basically doing a job of censoring and uh, sorting, weeding, prioritizing, all of this kind of stuff, uh, making basically mathematical decisions about processes taking place on the internet and of course as it spills over into our human world uh, then of course we start bending the way we do things to suit the computer because the computer works in a very particular fashion and you know humans well let's say we have to be trained to think that way because we don't naturally think along those lines those very very logical lines we do have some logic to uh, attach to our thinking but there's a lot of emotional uh, content in our thinking process, our thought processes. So this is an op-ed by none other than Henry Kissinger and it's called How the Enlightenment Ends. Uh, now when I did click on his name I noticed that uh, another piece that they had uh, written uh, was co-authored with none other than Eric Schmidt who used to be the head of Google. Uh, you can take this article for what it is. Uh, is it prophetic? I don't know, uh, are they actually sensing some kind of fear uh, from the way AI is taking over and the way in which it is taking over and that is this very cold logical form. Now a couple of interesting things I wanted to raise about AI myself, I don't want to go on too long because it is quite a long op-ed and I'd like to read you the whole piece and I'm just going to finish up, I'm not going to do uh, a piece to round out as I normally do. but. Um, I saw a TED Talks the other day and uh, this young lady was talking about AI and some of the issues with uh, not knowing how to basically ask the AI to do what you want it to do. And so she gave an example of uh, they asked the AI to go find the shortest distance to uh, move itself from point A to point B. And of course, you know, we assume because we're humans, it's going to be some kind of a linear situation, uh, walking, legs, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, but what it did was it built a tower to the height of the length between A and B and then just fell over. Well, of course, you know, I mean, it had solved the problem, but not in the way in which we had anticipated. Um, another example that she gave was, um, you know, these recent accidents they've had down in California where uh, the Teslas have been in AI mode, uh, driverless mode, and these Tesla vehicles have driven right into the side of tractor trailers. Well, when they investigated why it did that, uh, it was because they had only put into its memory banks the picture of the rear end of a tractor trailer because that's the view that you would naturally see of a trailer uh, following it down a highway. And so when it saw a tractor trailer in the side view, uh, it thought it was a billboard and ignored it. And so this shows you some of the dangers of not being able to ask the AI the right questions or to get the right operations to achieve what you think you're going to achieve. And of course, one of the main reasons for that is because we, what we do so automatically, uh, so easily, when it's actually a very complex process, uh, you know, you and I look at something and we immediately distinguish between uh, raised edges, um, whether a, a bottle on a shelf or a jar or something, um, you know, leaning against something, a human's face. We, we, we separate those immediately into categories uh, which are recognizable. Well, to a computer, that is just a bunch of pixelated dots on a page. And so how do you reference which pixelated dots are more important uh, than the others and what shapes? And again, we see with YouTube, uh, the algorithms that YouTube uses and uh, Google, I'm sure as well, have no sense of context. You know, a computer, no matter how uh, complex we get the programming and how much machine learning that you put into that program, it, you don't have that emotional context that humans do. You know, why are you doing something? Why do you tidy the house? It's not 
only, only part of it is a logical reason is because it's nice to have a neat and tidy house and it's hygienic to have clean working surfaces when you're cooking and so on and so forth but there's an emotional uh, content of that that it looks nice it looks neat and tidy it makes you feel better when your house is all cleaned up and in good order and uh, everything's sparkling so uh, a computer doesn't understand that at all so uh, maybe another example i could give is uh, from star trek uh, there was a brilliant episode uh, where Picard, this is the Next Generation series, uh, Picard and his crew end up at a planet and uh, there is no inhabitants on the planet and immediately they get a message which actually is a sales pitch for a unique weapon system. Anyway, they beam down to the surface and this weapon system starts doing a demonstration. Uh, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, it upgrades uh, every um, time it fails on a mission, so on and so forth. And uh, of course, the, what has actually happened on this planet is the original inhabitants of the planet had programmed into their weapon system, their computer, uh, to protect the planet from any invaders or anyone who would harm the planet. And of course it turns out that the biggest danger to the planet were the inhabitants themselves and so the weapon system turned on its makers and annihilated them. So, you know, I mean really when you, th when you look around today and you see the direction that we are going, you know, we seem to be blissfully unaware as to uh, how we are actually probably the biggest problem on the planet uh, today. And, uh, you know, you can just see how you can make a mistake like, like that by assuming that you're not part of the danger to the planet. And that the computer is going to recognize enemies the way you would recognize enemies to the planet. So uh, we are in great danger of handing over more and more and more of the decision-making process to uh, machine learning and AI algorithms and uh, it's going to be so unflexible there'll be no room for error we will all have to be perfect human beings uh, because they're going to be logging all of our activities and uh, there'll be points up and down absolutely no doubt about that uh, so uh, you know we, we, we are playing a dangerous game here we're flirting with something because AI I think could be a double-edged sword Anyway, uh, let's flip over to this article and um, this op-ed, and I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. Okie dokie, here we go. From the Atlantic, how the Enlightenment ends. Philosophically, intellectually, in every way, human society is unprepared for the rise of artificial intelligence. Uh, by Henry A. Kissinger. Three years ago, at a conference on transatlantic issues, the subject of artificial intelligence appeared on the agenda. I was on the verge of skipping that session. It lay outside my usual concerns, but the beginning of the presentation held me in my seat. The speaker described the workings of a computer program that would soon challenge international champions in the game Go. I was amazed that a computer could master Go, which is more complex than chess. In it, each player deploys 180 or 181 pieces, depending on which color he or she chooses, placed alternately on an initially empty board. Victory goes to the side that, by making better strategic decisions, immobilizes his or her opponent by more effectively controlling territory. The speaker insisted that this ability could not be pre-programmed. His machine, he said, learned to master Go by training itself through practice. Given Go's basic rules, the computer played innumerable games against itself, learning from its mistakes and refining its algorithms accordingly. In the process, it exceeded the skills of its human mentors, and indeed, in the months following the speech, an AI program named AlphaGo would decisively defeat the world's greatest Go players. As I listened to the speakers celebrate this technical progress, my experience as a historian and occasional practicing statesman gave me pause. What would be the impact on history of self-learning machines? Machines had acquired knowledge by a process particular to themselves and applied that knowledge to the ends for which there may be no category of human understanding. Would these machines learn to communicate with one another? How would choices be made among emerging options? Was it possible that human history might go the way of the Incas, faced with a Spanish culture incomprehensible and even awe-inspiring to them? Are we at the edge of a new phase of human history? Now, interesting point here, uh, the Incas were actually quite a formidable group and the only reason that the Spanish uh, overcame them 
uh, was through the use of smallpox. Uh, aware of my lack of technical competence in this field, I organized a number of informal dialogues on the subject, with the advice and cooperation of acquaintances in technology and the humanities. These discussions have caused my concerns to grow. Heretofore, the technological advance that most altered the course of modern history was the invention of the printing press in the 15th century, which allowed the search for empirical knowledge to supplant liturgical doctrine and the age of reason to gradually supersede the age of religion. Individual insight and scientific knowledge replaced faith as the principal criterion of human consciousness. Information was stored and systematized in expanding libraries. The age of reason originated the thoughts and actions that shaped the contemporary world order. But that is now in upheaval amid a new and even more sweeping technological revolution whose consequences we have failed to fully reckon with and whose culmination may be a world relying on machines powered by data and algorithms and ungoverned by ethical or philosophical norms. The Internet age in which we already live prefigures some of the questions and issues AI will only make more acute. The Enlightenment sought to submit traditional verities to a liberated analytical human reason. The Internet's purpose is to ratify knowledge through the accumulation and manipulation of ever-expanding data. Human cognition loses its personal character. Individuals turn into data and data becomes regnant. Users of the Internet emphasize retrieving and manipulating information over contextualizing or conceptualizing its meaning. They rarely interrogate history or philosophy. As a rule, they demand information relevant to their immediate practical needs. In the process, search engine algorithms acquire the capacity to predict the preferences of individual clients, enabling the algorithms to personalize results and make them available to other parties for political or commercial purposes. Truth becomes relative. Information threatens to overwhelm wisdom. Inundated via social media with the opinions of multitudes, users are diverted from introspection. In truth, many technophiles use the internet to avoid the solitude they dread. All of these pressures weaken the fortitude required to develop and sustain convictions that can be implemented only by traveling a lonely road, which is the essence of creativity. The impact of internet technology on politics is particularly pronounced. The ability to target microgroups has broken up the previous consensus on priorities by permitting a focus on specialized purpose or grievances. Political leaders overwhelmed by niche pressures are deprived of time to think or to reflect on context, contracting the space available for them to develop vision. The digital world's emphasis on speed inhibits reflection. Its incentive empowers the radical over the thoughtful. Its values are shaped by subgroup consensus, not by introspection. For all its achievements, it runs the risk of turning on itself as its impositions overwhelm its conveniences. As the internet and increased computing power have facilitated the accumulation and analysis of vast data, unprecedented vistas for human understanding have emerged. Perhaps most significant is the project of producing artificial intelligence, a technology capable of inventing and solving complex, seemingly abstract problems by processes that seem to replicate those of the human mind. This goes far beyond automation as we have known it. Automation deals with means. It achieves prescribed objectives by rationalizing or mechanizing instruments for reaching them. AI, by contrast, deals with ends. It establishes its own objectives. To the extent that its achievements are in part shaped by itself, AI is inherently unstable. AI systems, through their very operations, are in constant flux. As they acquire and instantly analyze new data, then seek to improve themselves on the basis of that analysis, through this process, artificial intelligence develops the ability previously thought to be reserved for human beings. It makes strategic judgments about the future, some based on data received as code, for example, the rules of the game, and some based on data it gathers itself, for example, playing one million iterations of the game. The driverless car illustrates the difference between the actions of traditional human-controlled software-powered computers and the universe AI seeks to navigate. Driving a car requires judgment in multiple situations impossible to anticipate and hence to program in advance. What would happen, to use a well-known hypothetical example, if such a car were obliged by circumstance to choose between killing a grandparent and killing a child? Who would it choose? Why? Which factors among its options would it attempt to optimize? 
and could it explain its rationale? Challenged, its truthful answer would likely be, were it be able to communicate? I don't know because I'm following mathematical, not human principles. Or, you would not understand because I have been trained to act in a certain way, but not to explain it. Yet driverless cars are likely to be prevalent on the roads within a decade. Heretofore confined to specific fields of activity, AI research now seeks to bring about a generally intelligent AI capable of executing tasks in multiple fields. A growing percentage of human activity will, within a measurable time period, be driven by AI algorithms. But these algorithms, being mathematical interpretations of observed data, do not explain the underlying reality that produces them. Paradoxically, as the world becomes more transparent, it will also become increasingly mysterious. What will distinguish that new world from the one we have known? How will we live in it? How will we manage AI, improve it, or at the very least prevent it from doing harm, culminating in the most ominous concern that AI, by mastering certain competencies more rapidly and definitely than humans, could over time diminish human competence and the human condition itself as it turns into data. Artificial intelligence will in time bring extraordinary benefits to medical science, clean energy provision, environmental issues and many other areas, but precisely because AI makes judgments regarding an evolving, as yet undetermined future, uncertainty and ambiguity are inherent in its results. There are three areas of special concern. First, AI may achieve unintended results. Science fiction has imagined scenarios of AI turning on its creators. More likely is the danger that AI will misinterpret human instructions due to its inherent lack of context. A famous recent example was the AI chatbot called Tay, designed to generate friendly conversation in the language patterns of a 19-year-old girl. But the machine proved unable to define the imperatives of friendly and reasonable language installed by its instructors and instead became racist, sexist and otherwise inflammatory in its responses. Some in the technology world claim that the experiment was ill-conceived and poorly executed, but it illustrates an underlying ambiguity. To what extent is it possible to enable AI to comprehend the context that informs its instructions? What medium could have helped Tay define for itself offensive, a word upon whose meaning humans do not universally agree? Can we at an early stage detect and correct an AI program that is acting outside our framework of expectation? Or will AI, left to its own devices, inevitably develop slight deviations that could, over time, cascade into catastrophic departures? Second, that in achieving intended goals, AI may change human thought processes and human values. AlphaGo defeated the World Go champions by making strategically unprecedented moves, moves that humans had not conceived and have not yet successfully learned to overcome. Are these moves beyond the capacity of the human brain? Or could humans learn them now that they've been demonstrated by a new master? Uh, yes, and that is the Star Trek situation. Before AI began to play Go, the game had varied layered purposes. A player sought not only to win, but also to learn new strategy potentially applicable to other of life's dimensions. For its part, by contrast, AI knows only one purpose, to win. It learns not conceptually, but mathematically, by marginal adjustments to its algorithms. So in learning to win Go by playing it differently than humans do, AI has changed both the game's nature and its impact. Does the single-minded insistence on prevailing characterize all AI? Other AI projects work on modifying human thought by developing devices capable of generating a range of answers to human queries. Beyond factual questions, what is the temperature outside, the question about the nature of reality or the meaning of life raises deeper issues. Do we want children to learn values through discourse with untethered algorithms? Should we protect privacy by restricting AI's learning about its own questioners? If so, how do we accomplish these goals? If AI learns exponentially faster than humans, we must expect it to accelerate also exponentially. The trial and error process by which human decisions are generally made to make mistakes faster and of greater magnitude than humans do, it may be impossible to temper those mistakes as researchers in AI often suggest by including in a program caveats requiring ethical or reasonable outcomes. Entire academic disciplines have arisen out of humanity's inability to agree upon how to define these terms. Should AI therefore become their arbiter? 
Third, the AI may reach intended goals, but be unable to explain the rationale for its conclusions. In certain fields, pattern recognition, big data analysis, gaming, AI's capacities already may exceed those of humans. If its computational power continues to compound rapidly, AI may soon be able to optimize situations in ways that are at least marginally different and probably significantly different from how humans would optimize them. But at that point, will AI be able to explain, in a way that humans can understand, why its actions are optimal? Or will AI's decision-making surpass the explanatory powers of human language and reason? Through all human history, civilizations have created ways to explain the world around them. In the Middle Ages, religion. In the Enlightenment, reason. In the 19th century, history. In the 20th century, ideology. The most difficult yet important question about the world into which we are headed is this. What will become of human consciousness if its own explanatory power is surpassed by AI and societies are no longer able to interpret the world they inhabit in terms that are meaningful to them? How is consciousness to be defined in a world of machines that reduce human experience to mathematical data, interpreted by their own memories? Who is responsible for the actions of AI? How should liability be determined for their mistakes? Can a legal system designed by humans keep pace with activities produced by an AI capable of outthinking and potentially outmaneuvering them? Ultimately, the term artificial intelligence may be a misnomer. To be sure, these machines can solve complex, seemingly abstract problems that had previously yielded only to human cognition. But what they do uniquely is not thinking as heretofore conceived and experienced. Rather, it is unprecedented memorization and computation. Because of its inherent superiority in these fields, AI is likely to win any game assigned to it. But for our purpose as humans, the games are not only about winning, they are about thinking. By treating a mathematical process as if it were a thought process, and either trying to mimic that process ourselves, or merely accepting the results, we are in danger of losing the capacity that has been the essence of human cognition. The implications of this evolution are shown by a recent design program Alpha Zero, which plays chess at a level superior to chess masters and in a style not previously seen in chess history. On its own, in just a few hours of self-play, it achieved a level of skill that took human beings 1500 years to attain. Only the basic rules of the game were provided to Alpha Zero. Neither human beings nor human generated data were part of its process of self-learning. If Alpha Zero was able to achieve this mastery so rapidly, where will AI be in five years? What will be the impact on human cognition generally? What is the role of ethics in this process, which consists in essence of the acceleration of choices? Typically these fields are left to technologists and to the intelligentsia of related scientific fields. Philosophers and others in the field of humanities, who helped shape previous concepts of world order, tend to be disadvantaged, lacking knowledge of AI's mechanisms or being overawed by its capacities. In contrast, the scientific world is impelled to explore the technical possibilities of its achievements, and the technological world is preoccupied with commercial vistas of fabulous scale. The incentive of both these worlds is to push the limits of discoveries rather than comprehend them and governance, insofar as it deals with the subject, is more likely to investigate AI's application for security intelligence than to explore the transformation of the human condition that it has begun to produce. The Enlightenment started with essentially philosophical insights spread by a new technology. Our period is moving in the opposite direction. It has generated a potentially dominating technology in search of a guiding philosophy. Other countries have made AI a major national project. The United States has not yet, as a nation, systematically explored its full scope, studied its implications, or begun the process of ultimate learning. This should be given a high national priority, above all from the point of view of relating AI to humanistic traditions. AI developers as inexperienced in politics and philosophy as I am in technology should ask themselves some of the questions I have raised here in order to build answers into their engineering efforts. The US government should consider a presidential commission of eminent thinkers to help develop a national vision. This much is certain. If we do not start this effort soon, before long we shall discover that we have started too late. 
So I hope you enjoyed that, and if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe below. And in the meantime, this is Hound Dog Steve signing off, wishing you a very pleasant evening, and we'll talk to you very, very shortly. See you now. Bye. Thank you.